Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Cloud Images Buff with Thomas Goigan. Uh, Thomas is a Debian developer who has worked in the OpenStack team and Python inside Debian. So please enjoy. Hello, everyone. So uh, let's first explain to everyone what the Cloud team is about. So our role in Debian is to uh, build cloud images that we want to uh, ship to our users so that they can use Debian in the cloud. This includes uh, posting these images in uh, some of the major cloud providers, as well as just providing them as a file so that you can use them directly. So uh, the, we have a bunch of topics on the other pad. Um, we should uh, first do a retrospective of what happened last year. And this includes uh, talking about the accounts. So uh, within the cloud team, we have accounts so that we can publish images on uh, the biggest uh, cloud providers, uh, to name them uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, Google Cloud Engine. So um, Ross, can you, can you tell us a, a bit about what happened to the accounts this, over this last year? So we've made some progress in moving the account ownership under a little bit of a, a better structure. We want um, SPI to, to hold those accounts so that they're not attached to an individual. Um, the last I heard, uh, the, the big setup on AWS is we've moved a lot of the stuff into the SPI owned account, but um, Noah, I think the last I heard from you and David was that some of the other setup for for like the vanity configuration was um, still pending internal Amazon changes. Is that correct? The, the big issue is the the additional accounts. So the the ones that we're using right now for um, publishing our daily images and our release images, um, those are are set up and and generally uh, uh, working the way we expect them to work. Um, we want to create. Um, we we have a number of, of of accounts that we've already created. We want them to be associated with SPI so that we can use them for other things. Like right now in the very old like non spi owned account we have a bunch of things related to um like ci.debian.org and and that sort of stuff that, that run um it would be great to get those out of there um that 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 old account also hosts the um uh cdn aws .deb .debian .org, cloudfront mirror and that sort of stuff that's uh run, run by uh, the mirror team and by um i i think um uh, James Bromberger is still involved in it. It's his account. Um, it'd be great to move those things to their own dedicated accounts. It would be nice to come up with a way to use some account to grant um, access to uh, AWS resources for uh, Debian developers who want to do, um, you know, who want VM access um, for for bringing up new services or that sort of thing, or just for doing, you know, having a scratch VM to use for having, you know, a, a getting access to a boatload of compute resources for doing a build. Um, like, you know, having access to that uh, myself through my internal AWS account, I can tell you that, you know, doing things like testing changes to the kernel um, are a whole lot easier when you have a hundred cores and super fast NV local NVMe disk and things like that. And you can do a full kernel build in four minutes. Um, like that's pretty cool. Um, we could do, we use that sort of stuff uh, for a lot of stuff. And it would be nice to be able to, to make that those resources available. So right now, like, you know, we can't do anything with that because it's just blocked at, at, at the AWS level. And, and you know, the, the, the goal is to fix it, but it's not fixed yet. So feel free to nag David Duncan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll add his name to the, I'll, I'll add his uh, email to the, um, uh, to the, like the, the, the Jitsi chat or something like that. And then everybody can nag him. <laughs> that, that's the best way to get things done. I think that, you know, the key point in here is going to be actually migrating out 
CDN stuff and everything was DSA managed right from this account because everything else I think can be quite easily scrapped or you know there is always somebody who can do it something about it those two things are probably the most important parts yep and on the other um, the other providers I, I don't believe that the state has changed if I recall um, it's been a while since I looked at the GCP status but I believe on GCP, the uh, there is already an organization that is owned by SPI that hosts the um, uh, Debian Cloud Experiments project. And um, I actually don't know what else is in there. Um, does anybody know, uh, for folks watching, what, what the rest of the resources in there is, or if, if they're more up-to-date info on the status of the GCP ownership? To be fair, I don't have probably up-to-date information, but last time I checked uh, the account which I was playing and I was able to access wasn't under SPI. So I, I don't know how it's been done. Maybe Valdi has some more information about it. I hmm. have some information about S uh, GCP that there isn't anything done. Um, we have the possibility to uh, assign accounts to SPI. We use it for Salsa, but we don't have anything for cloud team, cloud stuff, um, image stuff. Yeah. So probably this is something which we have to talk with Zach about. So we've got some resources for our own use case, right? Yeah, I think I have have a contact, a better contact at DevRel, the team that um, manages uh, the funds. Um, let's see, I haven't talked about uh, generic uh, money for stuff like cloud team, and we um, need a better way of dealing with, um, they need a better way to, for dealing with sponsorships for um, projects like Debian. And uh, just for the audience, uh, the account thing with Microsoft has been dealt like a year ago or something, right? My, Microsoft um, publishing was fixed before the uh, before the Buster release. You have a um, first party publishing account under the, under the name Debian assigned to SPI. SPI is a Microsoft partner. Um, yeah, and we use that. I, no, I am I surprised that the entire room didn't just burst out laughing at the sound of SPI being a Microsoft partner. That's one of the weirdest things I've heard in a long time. Yeah, maybe. me too, but I think everyone is muted, so they couldn't. And for many of us, right, we met at Microsoft uh, not that long ago. So perhaps I'm just used to the strangeness. Yeah, yeah. Great. I think that's it for the account retros. Um, does before we move on to the next item, is there any any other things on that that we should discuss? We don't have uh, any uh, money or accounts on Azure for cloud stuff. I I asked them a while ago, but never got through because it's. It works better, be, uh, better than uh, Google, but um, still they aren't able to um, create billing accounts that can't be um, uh, overdrawn. Hmm. Which means that we basically don't have the ability to test our images that we publish. And I think Noah is gone. Yeah, I think we lost uh, him right in the middle of that. And we lost Wally, who could have answered uh, his question. <laughs> well.
Welcome back. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I don't know if, if anybody caught the last thing I asked um, about running and, and accessing resources in Azure. Does that mean that we don't have the ability to run uh, like Azure instances um, so we can test our, our, our changes and that sort of thing? Or what's the, the status there? We have a sponsored subscription that's assigned to Gradative, aka the original one, where we can we could use, but uh, we haven't any setup to actually do it. So I think it's a similar situation with GCP, right? We've got this uh, project which Google created for us and for themselves to experiment with. So in theory, we could use it, but it's not under our control per se. So, you know, we cannot ensure that everything was done in there is, is really, you know, dependent on what we do. Yeah. So sh shall we move on to uh, the cloud unit upload? Maybe Noah, you can talk about it? Because you, you're, you're the man, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, following a, you know, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a very long time, uh, which is update some of the cloud-specific uh, uh, packages in a stable release. Um, largely, this is because the, uh, the 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 cloud platforms are fairly quick moving, and you know we we want to make sure that our users who are running on these clouds have access to uh, the latest functionality that they expect access to in the cloud. Um, so you know a lot of the Excuse me. So for those watching, what happened is that on the last uh, release of uh, Buster, we updated Cloud Init to version from version uh, 18 to version 20.2. Okay. Yeah. Excuse yeah. Me. Go ahead. I'm getting to that point. Um, so I'm giving some background. Um, so Cloud Init was the first package that the first time we actually uh, uh, decided to update a stable package that was cloud focused in. Um, and you know, the idea there was the new Cloud Init uh, had support for a number of new features um, as well. It, you know, it also included a bunch of bug fixes that were normally uh, uh, would normally have been considered for a stable update anyway. Um, it was the new features that were the the, the bigger consideration. Um, among them, uh, AWS has a new, um, uh, a new version of the instance metadata service, the thing that listens on the link local 169.254 uh, address uh, and, and serves a bunch of information over an HTTP interface about the instance. Um, they have a new version of that that adds a few security features and things like that. We wanted to make it sure that that was available to our users. Um, so after doing some testing, um, we, uh, we worked with the stable release team uh, to get a new version uh, 20.2 uh, accepted into um, Buster 10.5. Um, and that mostly went well um, in that the common use cases are just fine. Um, it did have a couple of regressions that, uh, that impacted some people. Um, I think the biggest of those regressions was um, the generation of what was how network configuration was generated, and in particular, what the files um, were uh, were named. Um, and the issue that we really ran into, uh, I think, to me, what this highlighted was that we Debian in general is kind of inconsistent in what we put in the slash etc slash network slash interfaces file in terms of how we uh, source the interfaces.d directory and the files in there. Um, there was some inconsistency between what happens with Debian installer, what happens with the if up down package, what happens with um, the uh, uh, the the cloud images that this team publishes. Um, and there were certain cases where um, people who had a an existing configuration were building their own images, uh, didn't get uh, uh, 
files created that were uh, that were actually sourced by if up down when bringing up the interface. Um, so that was obviously confusing for for people. Um, the 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 one provider that uh, contacted um, us was was one called Hetzner Cloud, and they um, the and, and and they had to make some changes when they adopted uh, Buster 10.5 uh, to adapt to the cloud init change. They were surprised by this. Um, they've managed to fix it uh, on their side. Not nor normally the sort of change that they expected to see in a stable release, and so that was that was sort of unfortunate. Um, and I think that was, that's the major issue with cloud in it. Um, I don't think we've heard any real negative feedback about it, um, but you know it doesn't look good when the very first cloud related stable feature change that we've made breaks people. Um, so uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know what we need to really do to to prevent this sort of thing in the future. Um, I kind of think that the cloud init change is ultimately the right one to have made. Um, it's just a surprise within a, within a stable point release. Um, I hope that the lesson learned from Edmer is that they should use our images. Maybe, um, you know, they, or at least, you know, one of the things that we did was we did put out a, a call for testing, um, you know, pretty early in this process. And we did try to make it, um, you know, visible that we were going to be making this change in a stable release. And, and we did try to give people the opportunity to test before we did it. Um, you know, so, so uh, you know, hopefully people are, are paying attention and are looking at, at, at changes that, that are that are coming up. Um, maybe we should do better about uh, you know trying to socialize this sort of stuff and trying to get it out there and really talk about it uh, before we make the change. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't I don't want to put the blame on them because um, this isn't the sort of change that normally comes out in in a Debian stable update. So you know it, it is a little bit of a surprise. Um, and you know I think I. Th I, I think maybe they could have done things differently, but I think we should have also tried to understand a little bit of about how we could have broken uh, our, our users. And um, you know, we did a pretty good job of testing the the environment that we all run in, like AWS and Azure. Like we did a, a decent amount of testing there. Um, I, I think uh, the at least the common. OpenStack deployments uh, using our images were tested fairly well. Um, you know, so that's the vast majority of the cloud in it uh, usage, I think. Um, but you know, so it's great that we didn't. You know, that that that, that all worked. That the common use cases were are supported and, and unchanged. But it's sort it's still unfortunate to break really anybody. I mean, we're not we're we're trying to avoid that in all cases. I'm, I'm not negating anything what you said, Noah. It's just, you know, I, for me, it's just the case. Basically, it's a, well, maybe I shouldn't say niche case, but that's what's happening, right? We are not capable of testing on everything because of the manpower, because availability to the platforms. Yeah. So unless we've got engagement from the cloud providers, ideally, then we are not capable of ensuring that everything works everywhere. Yeah, and one thing uh, that, that that is probably worth noting is that this really didn't actually break any existing instances anywhere, um, as as far as we know. Uh, it, it broke like Hetzner is publishing their own Debian images, and they were constructing uh, uh, the configuration in a particular way, and that broke when they tried to publish. 10.5 images. Um, it it didn't break any existing instances or or anything along those lines. So I think th in that case, you know, the impact was relatively small. You know, they were able to adjust their configuration and publish images that worked just fine using the using the newer cloud in it. And you know, the 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 level of effort involved in 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 fixing this issue on on their behalf was was not really high. All right, Sh shall we move on to the next topic? Uh, so sh shall we move on to uh, the to do for Bullseye? Yeah. Because we've yeah. got like 20 minutes remaining. 
Okay, fine. So, uh, shall we directly talk about systemd networkd? Who wants to start? So, uh, the discussion is, Shall we keep going on with uh, if up down, or do we, as a team, believe we should move to network uh, to the network handled by systemd? I think there are a number of unanswered questions about how systemd network D works. Um, we don't know if we can replicate the behavior that we currently have in our images today using network D. Last time I looked at it it didn't handle the case that you see today in um, at least in AWS VPCs and I suspect in Azure as well, which is that IPv4 is always on, IPv6 is optional, um, and there's really no way to know ahead of time which um, if you're running in dual stack or if you're running in v4 only um, and and it was hard to make i never found a way to make that work in network d but this is a while ago and may, maybe things have changed since then um, we were able to make it work with if up down and dh client but it's a little bit of a hack um, and it gets even hackier if you look at the merge request that I just opened uh, yesterday or so on uh, on Salsa uh, for adding policy routing um, for for these environments that hooks into uh, DH clients um, enter hooks and exit hooks and does a bunch of configuration of of, uh, of routing rules and stuff. If up down and DH client are super flexible and they let you do a bunch of stuff there, I don't know about doing all of that same stuff in network D. So we should do like a deep investigation of that and try to like prototype it or something and, and see if we can do it. Um, and you know, other than, without doing that, we really can't answer the question of whether we should move to network D or not. Like it, it may be possible, maybe really difficult, maybe easy. I don't know. We should we should figure it out. Um, there are also issues, I guess, though, of it not of cloud in it not really working with with network D and not doing any of the stuff that uh, not not configuring it. Um, it expects if up down, uh, which, by the way, is orphaned, and I don't. That's a little bit scary to me. What if up down is orphaned? Yeah. Oh, scary indeed. Yeah, and it's still default in the main image, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be fun. It's uh, yeah. still default in Debian. Debian installer uses it. Um... Yeah. Um, so I I don't know. Like I, I I've I've been looking at that 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 WMPP bug for a while. It's probably still open in a browser tab here. I don't. I, I'll I'll help if anybody wants to adopt if up down like I, it should not be orphaned this is kind of an important package um and you know I, I maybe if if like i know we have some feature requests uh that, we, that we'd like to see implemented that, that make this like optional ipv6 configuration like easier to work with uh in a if up down maybe we could implement that if we were maintaining that package um i don't know but i i don't want to Definitely don't want to do it myself. I played a little bit with uh, systemd network D and the uh, optional IPv6. I think it actually worked. You can uh, configure it to try uh, auto configuration, and at least on AWS, you get, um, I think, uh, a managed uh, config flag back, and that will uh, ask it to uh, use the DHCP v6. I think that actually works. OK. Um, do you have any thought about how the policy routing would get set up for secondary interfaces? Not yet. I have to look into it, because policy routing is crazy shit. <laughs> I was fascinated to hear that's a thing in the cloud. Yeah, uh, it could be that we could pull some tricks, Noah, with um, 
either additional drop-in units that we run after, or um, yeah. I don't know if network units support any of the uh, sort of like pre-post script features, uh, or if there are limits there. In in general, on a number of systems, I'm using system D network D, and it works very well. But in all of those environments, I know ahead of time that it's dual stack. So um, I don't have the central problem that you've mentioned. I cannot add anything to this. I'm not using net network D at all anywhere. So. And of course, there's you know, DH client and if up down, they they do work. Um, so I don't know. I, maybe there's like we we should decide if there's actually any benefit to making the switch right now. Does it make life easier for anybody if we actually are running network D? I don't know. Um, like on on some level, if we don't need to change anything, we probably shouldn't. Um, but you know, if if there's no future in if up down, then you know we should be. Maybe we, do, we, should, we should be working harder on that. Um, uh, I would expect that if there is no maintainer for the package, you know, in the Debian itself, at certain point, some people will start pushing network as default, right? And then we will be probably put in a situation that we will have to make work in network D, or we have to maintain if up, down, and everything around it on our own. Yeah, but that hasn't happened yet. I mean, there doesn't seem to be any move towards network D as the default for Debian more broadly, at least that I've seen. As far as I know, I don't think that's possible. Um, as last I looked, network D still won't do Wi-Fi configuration. So it would be a pretty uh, weak default for lots of people. It's okay. Hey, your, your webcam started working. Hello, Ellen. I guess one other question about moving to, to Network D. Um, what happens to other things in the DH client hooks? So do we, if we, if we look into network D, do we also have to look into using system D for time sync and um, other things that use the, the DH client hooks? I, I really don't want to move to anything else than Crony. I think Crony is super nice. Yeah, that, that's a it's a it's a good good question though, Ross. I think we should uh, you know understand. I, I I don't see any reason why network D would have to bring in time sync D. Um, I but I don't know. Um, it, it, we should make sure we know that for sure. All right, so the conclusion of the discussion is if somebody wants to try, we can experiment, see how it goes. And, and that's about what, what we know right now, right? Yep. OK, so uh, what's next in the agenda? Yeah, uh, something we need to discuss here about the the thing for the script for updating, we all know we need to, to work it out, right? There's no controversy, just uh, somebody needs to do it. What is the script that you're, what are you actually describing and what do you, what's the utility uh, of it? So there's a check open stack update uh, on the other part, right? Mm -hmm. So that script is used to Compare what what was in the old OpenStack image uh, with what is in the security repository, and that way we know whenever uh, an image needs to be updated or not. Yeah, so that, I, I I'm not convinced that we need that. Um, so I, I feel like for OpenStack, 
I, so we have the notion, we have our daily images that we build in Salsa. Um, and then we have our this notion of our release images. Um, and the release happens manually and it's based on a daily build. Um, and you know, we that's a decision that we make when a point release is issued or if a kernel change is is made or you know a, a some core package like that um i i don't know and and a release whether it's for a point release or for you know a a, a package change um makes new images available on all of the commercial clouds as well as for OpenStack. Uh, and so I don't think we need to like actually dig in at the package level to the generated images and try to make a decision on, you know, in, in terms of what to do with a new image. Um, it's, uh, yeah. The, the idea is to have a new image each time you have a pod release. And each time there's a security, there's a package updated in security, then obviously you you need a new image, right? Because you don't want not the security bug. Not necessarily, right? I mean, not every. So if it's a kernel change or something that requires like you know a a reboot in order to take effect, then definitely. But Cloud Init has the ability to apply security updates at boot, so you don't necessarily have to bundle every security update into a published image. Um, you know, it, for, for small things, like there was a, a recent thing that I think was in the, the default image, the a libjson something or other package um, that I, I, I think was, you know, I, I didn't see any point in, in publishing a, a, a new image to pick that package change up and, you know, making all of, you know, Initiating that amount of churn in all of our user environments, when you know Cloud Init can install that for you, and you can move on with your life. And I think we we also enabled unattended upgrades on all our images, so uh, this yep. will be done with uh, with this package. Yep. Yep. The one one thing I one use though that I do have for the the uh, that um, the script that does compare the contents of the images. It really would be nice when we do publish new images to have a very clear list of what is new in that new image. Um, so you know, right now when we when I've updated th the release image on AWS, I go and edit the Buster wiki um, in the, the cloud namespace uh, on wiki.debian.org. And, and like I mentioned that I released a, you know, that we released a new uh, AMI to AWS and that it can, includes a new kernel for some DSA or something like that. Not having to actually go and, and look at the security uh, mailing list archive and and, um, and and all that sort of stuff and get the package details and, and manually edit that into the wiki would certainly be nice. But, but so, so having something that would look into doing what the, the script does, give us, give us the result, and then we decide whether or not we publish a new image. That would be the idea, right? Uh, yeah, that, that's. I think that's that's pretty reasonable. But uh, can't we just diff the manifests? Uh, we have the JSON files where all packages with the versions number are in. So seeing what has changed should be much easier nowadays. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a case of someone has to implement it. Well, that's good though. It sounds like we agree it would be useful to have at least the um, notifications so that we could make the judgment. So I kind of started the transcript and never finished, I'm sorry. So uh, let's move on to the next. What's that exclusive thing or inclusive? Oh, yeah, uh, about containers and, and such. So uh, Renat, maybe you can start. 
Uh, we have a uh, question from from someone. Could could I share with you the the feedback? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, is there a scope for talking to other distros, for instance Ubuntu, to get common viewpoints on System D, Network D, and so on? I haven't um, tried to talk to anybody about Network D, but it is something that we've done occasionally. I know Noah uh, talks to folks um, about some device naming issues that came up recently. Um, after the IO scheduler back and forth, I did some survey of other distros and how they're handling uh, those scheduler settings. Um, I haven't posted that. I just did that last night. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so it is something we do occasionally, but we, we might want to ask around about Network D. I don't know if anybody is using it on other distros. No, I don't know either. Uh, I, I know that uh, on AWS that Amazon Linux does not. Um, they use DH client. Um, so. so the Ubuntu images are using their fancy thing that renders uh, for multiple things, right? Uh, how is it called? That plan. plan. It's called. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yep. All right, so uh, Renat, um, you joined because you are interested in having support for container images made by the Cloud Image team. Um, yeah, kind of. So I joined because I recently got interested in um, packaging Docker alternatives, uh, basically for the sake of this con uh, the conversation, it is Docker, while um, I'm most more interested in Portman and the sister tools. Um, I used to work a couple of years back with um, with Thomas on Fi, um, and I'm familiar with that toolset. And I am very excited to learn that uh, you're using that toolset for writing well the cloud images. And I wanted to explore possibilities and and ask for your opinions. Can we use these images as minimal baseline for um, uh, container images? I mean, this conversation that we just had. Um, it was a lot about network configuration, which is something that wouldn't be required in the cloud images. Um, nevertheless, I just from the naming here, it seems to me that something like cloud might be in scope. So basically, my question here is, where do you guys see the, um, the biggest challenges for being able to adopt base images or to provide some officially sanctioned base images um, for use in Docker Portman and other OCI compatible runtimes. Also, we have Raygrant in two forms, in VM form and in container form. Mm. So at a high level, the, the Debian images that are available on Docker Hub are not built by this team. They're built by other folks. And um, they've they've not wanted to, to adopt our tooling. Um, in the opinion of a couple people on the team, at least, that's a reasonable choice and not necessarily a problem. Uh, we've gotten a couple requests recently about extending the cloud um, the, the cloud build tooling to cover other image generation. Um, there was a thread on, on Debian Devel about this a, a little while ago. And my opinion is, I think that that could be reasonable, right? If we're providing a good platform for building images, then if people want to use it for other things, that's great. Um, but so far, the only use case that I've heard is, shouldn't we build Docker images out of the same thing as the cloud images? And I think the answer there is, I, I just don't see any reason why the current setup is a, is a problem. Those folks are doing their work in a different way. Um, they have, uh, in my opinion, good reasons for it. Um, they use different tools for good reasons, and um, they would prefer to keep it that way. So I, th I think. Um, the answer is yes, but what's the use case and who's going to do the work and do they want to use our tools? I think one one big sort of sticking point that 
isn't going away is that people would like there to be Debian official Docker images. Um, and the current Docker base image maintainers don't seem to be interested in the the, the need to build their images, the requirement uh, that their images be built on Debian controlled, DSA controlled infrastructure. I don't know if it's specifically DSA, but Debian owned infrastructure. Um, and that's, and, and so the images that are, are currently being published to Docker Hub um, are, are, are not eligible as is to be officially Debian. I don't care about that, um, but I, it seems that other people do. Uh, and, and, and unless the current maintainers are willing to change what they are doing, then you know the only way for Debian official images to exist is for somebody else to do those these builds. Um, so th that's that's you know. I'm happy with the ex images that exist today using Debureau type and you know the tooling that they have. Um, but if 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 people really aren't, then you know there's there's some, something to to consider there. One one thing I just want to add for folks who have not looked into the tooling there, um, the those images are built from data on snapshot.d.o, and my understanding is they are bit for bit reproducible reliably. So. One thing that is a little right the the letter of the law requires official Debian images to be built on Debian owned hardware, but it's very difficult in this case to figure out what the benefit of that would be. Um, you will literally get the same image um, from anywhere. So it's it's a little bit of a hard sell to somebody to say to take this working process that you know millions of people are using productively, make a bunch of changes to it and and you don't get any additional benefits except um, sort of a rubber stamp uh, of approval. Um, at least to me, that's a, that's a hard sell. I think you summarized the situation very, very well. Um, the seal of approval is one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is, look, um, we have a cryptographic key infrastructure where we can establish a chain of trust from the Debian FTP archive key, which is not the case for the uh, Docker images that you have at Docker Hub. Um, I th that was the thing that irked me a lot. Um, but I mean, you're totally right. Uh, the the technical infrastructure that um, um, you know, these images have been built with this Debuero type, um, the fact that they're reproducible, that is a compelling argument. There's serious engineering work that went into that, and frankly, they work quite well. These images. It's maybe that can be approached from a more political side, um, where there is some. A recommendation or some 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 blessing or some some statement from the cloud team um, that uh, could mitigate that concern. I don't know. I, I I question whether that statement needs to come from the cloud team, um, given that we aren't part of constructing Docker images today um, or container images today. Um, you know. Who cares what our opinion is on on the container images? Uh, you know, we're the peanut gallery as far as anybody's concerned. That's that's, fair. that's more of a question for trademark and PL because they set uh, the requirements, which are not uh, um, yeah. Which I'm not handled by them. Yep. So th there, there is a bug open right now uh, about this topic. Um, I think it's assigned to general. Um, it was assigned to the cloud for a while, but I, I kicked it over there because it just doesn't belong with us. Um, if anybody does feel strongly and want to weigh in on it, that bug is probably the right place to to talk and and make sure that DPL and and, and the trademark team are are involved and and aware and and follow up with them if you if you want to pursue it like along those lines. Uh, I want to know if it's interesting to have Docker images for the image that we already built so we can test them in a container way or not. 
it's not good to have them. I mean, we I, don't need to publish to Docker Hub. We just need to have them in Salsa. I don't see any benefit in that because the things that we want to test are not the things that are going to be tested in a container. Um, the things that we want to test are, are you know, how do we are are we setting up our um, our partitioning right? Are we setting up our our um, you know our kernel uh, command line right? Are we is cloud in it doing the right thing? Uh, is our network interface configuration doing the right thing? Like those are that's where we're making changes to uh, uh, to Debian, and I don't you know that's not quite you're not testing the same thing if you test that in a container like you can you can make it work you can run cloud in it in a container and you can give it a metadata endpoint to talk to and stuff but um it's i i think that you might if you really want to test the real experience you should just be testing on an instance wherever you possibly can um so i i i think the better thing to do would be to focus on making that easier to do on all of the common cloud platforms making it easier to test on on azure on aws on gce and on at least one OpenStack provider so uh, I have one, lot... one question for uh, Jeremy. Go ahead. Hang on. Can, can I? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Jeremy, do you know uh, what Zoom is using for for Docker images? How does it work? Um, I, hopefully, my microphone is working. Uh, Zool's Docker images are actually. Uh, based on the Debian base image, um, and then they just add layers for uh, the additional dependencies and services that are installed. Is that what you're asking? So like, is it, does, does it use satellite Docker with cloud? There's no cloud in it involved or something, right? Uh, I, I, I couldn't make out the question. What was that? There is no cloud in it involved in those images, right? Oh, no, no. Uh, not for the, okay. I mean, you're, you're asking about the container images that that are published with the Zool software in them, or you're asking about Zool testing on container images, because uh, the, the latter. I, I, I want to, so for the other folks, so Zool is uh, Docker uh, as a service in, in OpenStack, right? So that you can launch uh, Docker instances. And I was wondering what, what, what it runs, and if you, if it may, would make sense to have some of the, the images from the cloud team in this kind of case. Sorry, uh, we are out of time, okay. Sego. Please. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's move that to IRC. I can talk to you on the, the cloud channel. Yep, looks like we have to wrap it up. Yeah, so thanks, everybody.